Before we begin, we would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Fort William First Nations people, signatory to the Robinson Superior Treaty of 1850. Good morning. I'm Alex from McMaster University. And I'm Fu Young from the University of Waterloo. And we represent Team Superior Innovations, and we're honored to share with you Face to Face. Face to Face is a software which enables us to drastically reduce the bandwidth required for video conferencing. But first, a little bit about us. So we are proudly from the small city of Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada, located on the north shore of Lake Superior, about eight hours away from any major cities. So we are quite geographically isolated. This is a picture of our team in the back row. Our team has five members, Assis, Amir, Alex, Ewan, and myself. We actually met first back in the early days of grade nine, when we were making bottle rockets for tech class in high school. Although we have gone our separate ways for university, this hackathon gave us the perfect opportunity to work, to work together again while making a real and pragmatic difference in our community. The many struggles we have witnessed growing up and going to school here in the city are representative of the issues students face as a whole in remote communities with regards to mental health and educational attainment. Throughout high school, we have seen firsthand the experiences of fellow students, particularly those of indigenous backgrounds ex who experience profound and debilitating challenges accessing mental health services. We recognize that poor access to valuable resources worsens existing inequalities, especially with regards to mental health services, which is a massive, massive issue in remote Northern communities. For students, the current pandemic especially has amplified isolation and severely limited their access to mental health workers and mental health support with, the limit, with poor internet infrastructure, making, session, making sessions extremely difficult as everything has been shifted online. We recently actually spoke with a child psychiatrist in our region and she described one significant difficulty, the internet. She told us how, how slow internet can severely impact the quality of a session. The alternative for this is for the clinician to actually call the client through the telephone. This method, however, brings with it its whole new set of challenges. For one, a telephone conversation does not allow the clinician to assess the client's crucial nonverbal cues and important emotional expressions. This in turn drastically reduces the effectiveness of the consultations and in turn worsens the existing mental health crisis. I cannot stress enough that it is so crucial that these limitations with regards to mental health services and access to mental health support are addressed immediately. As we know that mental health is a key, key factor in producing su successful educational outcomes. Our product, Face to Face, does just this. It improves the quality of mental health sessions by reducing the bandwidth while retaining the same quality of video that clinicians have come to expect. points on the user's face. The points are then sent to the other user, which are used to manipulate an avatar who mimics the facial expressions of the first user. Since the avatar is already downloaded on the computer, it allows us to minimize the data sent over the internet. To make the calls more personal, we've actually included a feature where users can make an, their own avatar of their own face. It's a very simple process where they just have to move their head around a little and make a few common expressions. And this way, you can actually see the person you know you're talking to, but keep the low bandwidth. We've decided to use a peer-to-peer -peer network instead of a central server. We've just installed a simple node.js server and a NoSQL database to easily send data between users. To protect the clinician's data, we've used a virtual network, which ensures that the call is kept on a separate network than the clinician's Wi-Fi and any sensitive documents. Since the computers are talking directly to each other, the only main malware threat is from the other user sending malware to the first user. But since we're using coordinates, we know exactly what they're supposed to send, so we can filter out anything that's not these coordinates and drastically reduce the threat of malware. In summary, face-to-face -face provides a secure network for mental health workers to communicate with their clients in low bandwidth regions. Our software allows the clinician to see a high definition reconstruction of the patient's face and thus monitor facial expressions and nonverbal cues. 
which are crucial for the clinician to accurately assess the patient's situation. All of these things are done by sending coordinates instead of an actual video feed. And through this, we're actually able to reduce the bandwidth that Zoom, one of the leading video conferencing sites requires by up to 77%. Now this difference, this major, major difference is especially important in communities with limited internet access, such as the small village of Mantuaj in Northern Ontario. And it is actually one of hundreds of communities up north with limited internet access. Zoom needs approximately 600 kilobits per second upload download minimum to function. Our program face-to-face -face, only needs 134 kilobits per second at most. To put this into perspective, Manitowoc, the city, the village we just described, has an average internet speed of 200 kilobits per second. Now, if you were a student in Manitowoc, you would not be able to run Zoom at all. However, for our program, there would be no problems at all. Of the other video conferencing software, only Google Duo comes close to the bandwidth that face-to-face -face can reach. However, to do so, they actually compress the video file to a point where it's very hard to quickly and accurately assess any changes in facial expression. Additionally, you can only achieve this on a mobile device with a phone plan. This means that they're not a competitor in our use case, where you need laptops and computers to be successful. Here is a Venn diagram of our competitors. On the right and in the blue are competitors which require little bandwidth, as the previously mentioned Google Duo and the traditional telephone. On the right are traditional video conferencing softwares, which allow the use users to uh, have an emotional connection and also work very well on a computer, such as Microsoft Teams and Zoom. However, none of these have both, which is exactly why we believe face-to-face -face is definitely in a category all by itself. To implement our idea, we are going to partner with local mental health organizations to offer a pilot project of only a few hundred participants. Actually, we've already begun talking with multiple organizations who want to implement face-to-face -face in their programs. We will market face-to-face -face at a freemium model, which means that we'll give out a basic model for free and a professional model for $10 a month with access to advanced features such as customizable avatars and longer call times. Now, since we know money may be an issue in some of the rural communities where we want to have an impact, only the clinician is required to pay this fee. They can then distribute a distribution code to all of their clients who can then access premium features without charge. With the revenue we generate, we will use it to continue to develop and optimize our software. It is a, new, it is a very new technology after all, and it hasn't been optimized, which means that through more time and development, the required bandwidth for video conferencing will only get lower. Though we've decided to focus on a mental health application for face-to-face, -face, it does not need to be a mental health specific solution. It can be used in a variety of situations, including connecting educators to students in low bandwidth areas. It can help connect remote startups to investors, or since it requires you to not send your face over the internet, it can be used to help people who wish to remain anonymous to get the mental health help they may need. Furthermore, since low furthermore, since there's no additional technology or infrastructure, it can be very easily implemented to quickly have a global impact. And since low bandwidth is not a Northern Ontario issue, it impacts people all across the globe. Face-to-face -face can be used anywhere where video conferencing is a requirement, but low bandwidth is a limitation. To be clear, Face-to-face -face does not replace the need for infrastructural investment into rural communities. However, until this permanent change occurs, we do not have to accept this inequality in connectivity as the status quo. Face-to-face -face ensures that no one is left behind as we transition into an increasingly digital world. We would like to thank you for your time. We really appreciate you, ta you, you taking the time uh, to listen to our presentation and we will take questions at this time. Thank you very much, uh, Superior Innovations. So Thunder Bay, yeah, I was there a couple of weeks ago. Fabulous, fabulous. Oh, fabulous really? Town. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's go straight to the questions. Um, first hand up, uh, I see you. 
Hi, thank you very much for a great presentation. Um, and I really like to focus on inclusion. Um, I, I was very interested in the sort of um, wider application of this technology, particularly you mentioned about distance learning. And I'd just like to hear a little bit more on the ideas you have on that. Sorry, on the, on the potential other uses for our application? Yeah, particularly sort of distance teaching, et cetera. So since it requires no infrastructure, it's a, we use a very general user interface, which it's, works very much like other video conferencing softwares. So it is very flexible and can be adapted to almost any situation. So we're thinking in terms of education specifically, it can be very, it can be used to connect tutors to students in rural areas so that these students can have the personal help and personal coaching that many other students in other areas of the world have. And you might, you might think that, you know, um, it would be very hard to distribute, uh, especially for rural areas. Um, and even in rural areas where download may be a huge issue, we always, we always provide the platform to perhaps send them a USB stick or send them a disk, which allows them to still access the software and access the help, whether it be mental health, mental health or education that they need in a manner that is appropriate for their, for their needs. Thank you. And uh, the next question from, from Jocelyn. Uh, thank you for an excellent presentation. Uh, really very interested and I appreciate your focus on uh, a very vulnerable population. Um, I was interested in knowing how much uh, research you've done with uh, clinicians themselves in knowing whether the avatars successfully provide them with the information they need, whether the sophistication of the software, if you like, is at a point where a um, clinician can really make a proper have you examined that? Thanks. So when we spoke to the child psychiatrist in our region, we actually showed her the avatar to see what she thought. Now, we have to acknowledge that it's not a perfect solution. Obviously, we want to be in person directly talking to the person we're speaking to. But in a situation where you can't use Zoom, you have to use a telephone, This uh, the avatar provides sufficient information to get by to people who would otherwise not have this option. Yeah. It's, it's as we kind of talked about in the, in the presentation, you know, for a, cl for a clinician, it's so important to pick up on those nonverbal cues and facial expressions. And when we talked to the child psychiatrist, she said that this, our program would be a great help for her to at least be able to pick up on some of those cues, which may convey deeper feelings and emotions that are otherwise lost. Thank you, that's great. Thank you. Uh, to the next question from Nick, great target group. However, why not expand to other user groups? Bandwidth is a huge problem in developing countries. So we've decided to focus on this group because Northern Ontario is our home. We've seen this issue affect many people. We wanted to create an impact at home first. And it's always best to start off with a small community to start out with that way you can fix any bugs before you go worldwide. Now, after we started making an impact and we've perfected and streamlined our software, it is very easy and we very much want to go worldwide and impact everyone in every country. Thank you. A question from, uh, from Colin. Can you speak to competitors that are using your same idea of avatars versus streaming video? Are you aware of any others? So in terms of avatars, the closest thing we found is Snapchat and TikTok, which use filters when you send photos. However, they actually take the avatar, put it as a photo and then send the photo. We haven't actually found anyone who uses this type of software to create a video conferencing service. Yeah, we believe that uh, we are uh, in a very unique niche in the market, especially because in a time where video conferencing softwares are becoming saturated. Um, there's so many different ones, such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams. We believe we are really, truly in a, in, a, in a very unique niche in the market. Thank you. Question from Winnet. What are the potential you see using this application in, uh, in other areas than mental health? So as we said before, it really is, it can provide anyone 
with a video conferencing software where you can have a you can feel like you're having a personal connection if you don't have the bandwidth to use another video conferencing software. So we mentioned say investors. So we can help rural startups have the same um, advantages that other startups in say Silicon Valley have because they can now call the investors who will give them the resources to grow even if they can't do a traditional Zoom call. Or actually the first issue we thought of when we created it was some people aren't comfortable sending their video across um, the internet and we allow them to call the person they need without actually needing to show their face but the other person can still see what expressions they're making and feel like they're talking to the person in person. Thank you. And last question uh, from Mishek. Mental health is an important issue. Thank you for focusing on that. Can you speak to your approach to how you are going to handle privacy issues? So with the privacy issues, the peer-to-peer -peer network we create creates a direct tunnel from one computer to the other computer. This means that for a hacker to infiltrate it, they would need to hack one of the users directly. However, since we are sending coordinates instead of an actual video feed, we know exactly what we're supposed to be receiving, and that is 68 pairs of numbers. And if the information we get from one user to the other isn't those 68 numbers, the system is set up to discard that information, thus discarding any potential malware in the process. Additionally, the virtual network is kind of our last backup. So it puts it on a separate network than the clinician, which means that if there's small chance that it actually is hacked, it's separate than all the clinician's sensitive data and documents, which means that they remain protected. Thank you, Superior Innovations.